hey, I'm back. I know I haven't posted recently. Usually I do one a week. The reason is I was out on vacation and that is the subject of today's video. It'll be a quick one. I wanted to talk about how I kept my seedlings that are on the table behind me alive and evenly watered while I was on vacation. If anybody saw my videos last year, you can remember we had a complete disaster. I'll post a link to that here. But essentially I created a steam bath and lost all of my tomatoes. This year, I tried something different and it did work. I wanted to share that in some detail in case anybody else wants to try it. The water level really does matter if you're starting from seed in blocks of soil. You need them to be evenly moist, but not too wet. If they're too wet, the roots will drown. If it's too dry, the seeds can't germinate. And it can be tricky to keep that nice, even moisture level if you're not going to be home for a week, which is what was happening for us this year. I decided to take advantage of osmosis and the fact that water will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The quick basics of my watering setup normally are that my soil blocks go on a perforated tray and that nests inside of a solid plastic tray. Water goes in the solid tray and it moves up through the perforations in the top tray and it wicks into the bottom of those soil blocks through capillary action. If the soil blocks dry out, they pull the water up into them and everything stays evenly moist. When I'm not here, it can be hard to make sure that there's sufficient water available for that to happen. Taking advantage of capillary action in another way, I took a strip of basic kitchen paper towels, laid them in the bottom tray, and then nested the perforated tray on top so it sandwiched those paper towels in between. I put the end of that strip of paper towel into a bowl and filled that with water. The idea here is that if the soil blocks start to dry out, they will pull water, again capillary action and osmosis, from the bowl where there's a high concentration of water through the paper towel and into the soil blocks. The one thing I had to protect for was just too much evaporation and loss of water out of the bowl to the air. For that reason, I chose a Pyrex bowl that I own that has a lid that snaps on top of it. And I put that on top once I'd filled the bowl with water to help retain that moisture and make sure that it didn't just evaporate into the air of the room. An important detail that I recommend you also follow, I set all this up the night before we left, filled the bowl with water, left it overnight. When I got up in the morning that we were going to leave, all of the water in the bowl was pretty much gone. The dry paper towels had pulled the water through them, which was great. I could see that the capillary action was working, but the bowl was empty. If you do this approach, I recommend you also do it the night before so that you can check the next morning and see how much more water you need to add. I topped the bowl back off, I snapped the lid back on, and we left. Now that we're back, let me show you how this turned out. It worked well for one of my two trays. This is my brassicas tray. It has kale and broccoli in it. They did quite well. The soil stayed evenly moist. The seedlings didn't drown. I got good germination and they're popping up now. It's worth noting why the other tray didn't work. <laughs> this tray is my Solanaceae tray and it has tomatoes and peppers in it. And just looking at it, you can see I, I got nothing. Nothing germinated. It's just a whole little deathscape over here. The reason for the difference in performance is the soil temperature. If you watched my video on the overwintering of salad greens, I touched on this, but seeds germinate at very different temperature ranges. Most of them are quite happy at 60 to 65 degrees. And I was thinking, hey, these are at room temperature, we're gonna be fine. Everybody's happy, they'll all germinate. I don't need to use a heating mat underneath this, it'll be great. What I forgot is that when we go on vacation, we turn down the thermostat. In this case, my husband turned it down, I think all the way to 40, because we were really just worried about making sure the pipes didn't freeze or something if we had a crazy cold snap. Unfortunately, we did have a cold snap while we were gone. It even snowed and the house dropped, I think all the way down to 40. And if you look at that temperature range chart again, the blue here is the absolute minimum temperature that needs to exist in order for these seeds to germinate. The kale, the broccoli, even at 40 degrees, they'll germinate. Tomatoes and peppers will not. Because the house went all the way down to 40 degrees, the soil went all the way down to 40 degrees, and those Solanaceae plant seeds just sat there in cold, wet soil and rotted, basically. If I had remembered that we were going to turn the thermostat down, I would have put a heat mat underneath those guys to help make sure that they at least stayed warm while we were gone. Lesson learned. Which means, once again, this year, I'm just gonna go buy my transplants at a garden center for all of my tomatoes and peppers, and no one's gonna die. It's not the end of the world. I figure at least I screw up in a different and exciting new way every year, which allows you guys to learn from my mistakes in new and exciting ways. That's it in a nutshell. 
This approach works really well for moisture. Use the paper towel, put it in a bowl of water. You'll be happy with the results, I think. Just don't, like me, forget about the thermostat. And if you are gonna turn it down while you're on vacation, which you should, please think about how you can keep just those seedlings at least at 60 degrees to really help with your germination. If your seeds have already germinated and you're just trying to keep them alive, don't worry about the temperature. Just use the paper towel and bowl and you'll be good in terms of moisture. That's it for this one. I will do a video pretty soon on our plans for the permaculture site, the suburbiculture lot that we're developing with the long season crops like onions and garlic and how I'm gonna work those in, as well as how that fits into a sun trap orchard design that I'm going to design to keep deer out of that area. So we have a lot of deer pressure. If that's of interest, you can check out that video next. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. Thanks.